So there's not a lot to unbox with this one. Uh, this is an OEM drive, so they just sent it to me. There was some plastic wrap around it, but that's about it. So this right here is the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drive. This is the eight terabyte model. And basically it's a NAS drive, so it's more geared towards enterprise level application support or any NAS applications, anything, anything that's basically readily available a lot. And this particular drive boasts a million hour between failure, the mean time between failures, one million hours, which is pretty good for a hard drive. Also, this drive boasts 184 terabytes an hour, uh, or an hour, <laughs> 184 terabytes a day of sort of resilience. So basically it's kind of designed to be accessed over and over and over and over and over again. So the 184 terabytes a day is the, the measure of how much data can be read and, wrote, read and written off the drive per day by users. So most of the time you're talking about, in the case of a NAS, you have files on the drive and people are reading it, reading it, reading it, reading it, maybe writing it a couple times, etc. So, if we look at on the back here, hopefully that, you can tell this drive, if you've seen a lot of hard drives in the past, there's no recess at all in this drive. It's just hard drive all the way to the bottom. So like, it's flat back down here. And usually you would see, like you see a little recess here, and usually there'd be a recess all the way around this, but this is just flat. Um, the drive is really heavy, it's eight platters, I remember eight platters, eight terabytes, uh, five platters, as I recall, for this unit. And the PCB is just kind of jammed up here in the corner. I mean, there's really no space left. And I'm kind of actually impressed because there's also a 10 terabyte model of this, and I have no idea where they put the extra space. They must just make the platters bigger. So that's what we've got. Um, I guess the platters themselves are probably one terabyte in size, and in this eight, eight, uh, in this eight terabyte model, you know, the platters are double-sided. So, in this eight terabyte model, we have, uh, maybe actually the 10 terabyte has five, and this maybe has four. I'd have to look that up, but, uh, anyway, there's not a lot to this. We're gonna go ahead and plop this in a machine and actually do some, some actual testing with it, because you guys probably know what a hard drive looks like, and this is what this one looks like. It's real hefty. I might actually throw this on a scale real quick and, uh, show you how much it weighs. I've actually put this on a scale, and uh, it's 768 grams. So uh, let's, uh, I'll throw another hard drive on this real quick just to give you a comparison. So this is an older uh, 250 gig Seagate drive, and you would expect because it's older it'd be lighter, but look at that, 582 grams. And uh, what I was talking about earlier with um, the recess, you can see here that we have this like significant recess, yep, there you go, significant recess here whereas this drive does not have any recess whatsoever. There you go. And you can also see that like, the motor and the bearing here are much larger in this model, so we've got... It's, uh, there you go. We've got a much larger bearing and motor here in the middle than, say, a standard drive, which has much smaller. See. So now we're actually here at the computer and we're going to go ahead, once I, now that I've initialized this drive as, uh, as D, I put a bunch of crap on it, and we can see it's about 7.5 terabytes or so when you actually format it. That's pesky file formatting, you just lose a little bit of space, but we're actually going to, uh, separately, obviously, we're going to actually run all these tests, or a few tests, on this drive. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to go full-blown 32 gigabyte, a gigabyte packet, uh, you know, five times. And we'll see what that looks like. And then we'll sort of go down from there. So what we can see here is the uh, sequential tests on the 32 gigabyte, gigabyte uh, test went out quite well, actually. 189 megabytes per second read, 202 for the write on the uh, QDEP 32 tier 1 test, and then uh, standard sequential is about 182 and 181, respectively, here. So we're going to fire off. I think we'll just drop down to about 4. Run that one. 
see where we're at. You can really hear it like kick on. That's the big thing that's really noisy about this drive is when it's idling and then it kicks on. It's like, zzz, pff, like it makes a really like zzz, pff, noise, which, eh, not the end of the world. <laughs> So what we see after the first three tests here is that, uh, you know, we have pretty decent speeds overall. Um, it's what I'd kind of expect for a mechanical drive of about this caliber. Uh, it's kind of important to note that as our file size that we're testing with goes down, you kind of see these, um, these 4K random writes and reads going up slightly and that should be down to the fact that this drive specifically has that 256 megabyte cache and that cache is very important for obviously doing reads and writes and sort of that. I mean 256 megs is quite large for a hard drive but what you do see is sort of a steady, um, a steady climb as the size of the file we're testing goes down we see these random tests go up and the sequential stay about where we would expect them. I know this one's kind of low and this test in general, this four gigabyte test is a little low and it's hard to say whether or not that's just because of the machine I'm running or what have you. I mean, you know, there's always variation, you know, you can never rule out every single thing, but from, from what we can see here, you know, we see some of these tests are consistently getting faster and faster as this, as the uh, file size goes down. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop down to a hundred megabytes, and we're going to run this test real quick. It should take very, very short amount of time. Well, so what you can see here is a, a huge improvement in a small size. And I, I actually um, ran this test a couple times off camera because it's, it's just kind of hard to, hard to put into perspective. But really, if you think about a smaller size, a lot of that's down to, you know, the disk isn't spinning as long, so we're not reading as much. And we also take advantage of that giant cache. And I mean, if you think about it from the perspective of what you're going to be using a NAS hard drive for, that's kind of good. I mean, and I would expect to see a similar pattern um, when we do this 50 megabyte test, but we will uh, we'll see what happens. And there we are, and you know, the last test kind of proved what I was talking about earlier. Honestly, overall, the numbers look pretty pretty reasonable in the sense of mechanical drives. That's kind of what we would expect, you know, very, very good at sequential, not as much for random tests. I really like the small random file size, that's really good, and obviously that's a really strong showing for something like a NAS drive, that's where you'd expect it to be good. So, I hope this was really helpful for you all, and uh, Stick around for some more videos later on, but uh, as far as the Seagate Iron Wolf, I'm going to give this uh, drive a solid five stars. Um, it's not exactly what you'd call reasonably priced. You know, we're well into you know 250 to 300 dollars for this line of drives, but then again, we're talking eight to ten terabytes of disk space in one drive. Like that's crazy. I have a NAS with five drives in it that has less space, so you know. Do with that what you will. I mean, long term, we'll see how it goes. You know, I'm I'm more than willing to report back if this drive keels over. I'm going to be saving a lot of stuff on it as a backup drive, and we'll be hammering on it and seeing how it does over time. But so far, I mean, looks good, and uh, the numbers speak for itself. So I think it's a pretty strong drive, and it does exactly what you would expect it to do. So if you like this video, uh, you can certainly subscribe to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. If you have anything to talk about, comment section down below. Stay tuned for more videos from me.